Landscaped luxury as far as the eye can see. The ocean front at Miami Beach, Florida, USA. Unique for reasons that are quite obvious. Modern America, the dream and the reality all in one place. The cloverleaf, the throughway, the intercontinental jet that brings the subtropical world of Florida just a few hours away from anywhere. Fifty years ago, this land was a swampy wilderness and would have stayed that way if it hadn't been for the spirit that took pioneers south in search of sun as well as west in search of land and gold. The big discovery that changed everything was that in Florida, there's no such word as winter. Ever since the news broke, people have been hurrying south at the first sign of frost. Miami Beach's Collins Avenue is part of a seven mile long strip of hotels. Enough of them to stay in a room with a different view of the ocean every night of the year. The fact that there's no such thing as winter means that summer, May to September, is the off season. Miami's topsy-turvy twist to tourism. In summer, the prices go down, although the temperature goes up a little. Civilization here is unashamedly preoccupied with the worship of sunshine. There's something unique, they say, about a Florida suntan, probably because it's soaked up just a few painless hours away from snow flurries and frozen pipes. During the summer months, it's more or less guaranteed or money back. Of course, there's much more to Miami. Lincoln Mall is the beach's own pedestrian precinct shopping center, where you can walk in the shade or ride the tiny canopied tram car. Sooner or later, even the most avid sunbather leaves the beach and takes a trip by monorail round the famous Sequarium, a sea circus aquarium with an all-day action-packed program. Aquarium Dolphin Act has a twist in its tail. You can see what these acrobatically inclined sea mammals do underwater as well as in the air. Even dolphins seem amused by their own antics. Deep sea fishing just a few miles off the beach is usually more serious where the experts are concerned, but captain and mate are there to help anyone in mastering the art of wrestling with blue marlin, blackfin tuna, tarpon sailfish and the other big fish game that swarm these always warm waters. There's room for six in a boat and the price for a day or half a day includes bait, tackle and the expert advice. Where the fish run may not be so easy to organize, but few first timers come back empty handed. Once on the trail of the mysteries of the deep, most visitors to Florida feel bound to take the seaway road to Key West. Key West, at the end of the 200-mile string of offshore islands, is the USA's southernmost city. Its balconied colonial homes share the tiny island with the recently arrived motel generation. Key West was bought from the Spanish in 1821 and was, at one time, Florida's richest town when Miami was a struggling hamlet. 
The best way to see its own very special tourist attractions is by the conch tour train, which chugs round the island four times a day. The hotels may be fairly new to Key West, but the seafaring tradition is well established. The ever-present pelicans play a prominent part. Key West is the last of Florida's keys, for the time being, because these islands are always growing around the ever-marching roots of the mangrove trees. As soon as the roots take hold in the water, sand and silt complete the job, nature's own reclamation project. After sunshine, the mangrove is Florida's most persistent emblem, most prolific in the watery wilderness of the Everglades. At Royal Palm Hammock, in the midst of the Everglades National Park, you can take a boardwalk stroll through jungle teeming with natural life. Everglades leave an indelible memory of all that's wild and unspoiled. Just one hour from the sophisticated pleasures of Miami, where everyone manages never to stop enjoying themselves, even when that all-important sun has gone down.